and welcome to Virtuos. Today we will be making some polymer clay minis mixed with some excess sprue materials. I had some leftover sprues from Frostgrave soldiers. So for shields and weapons it's usually easy just to use them for clue tokens or terrain, but what to do with the excess heads and hands? That's what I'll be going through today. With some polymer clay and metal wire you can create your own minis by using leftover sprues. I used this Frostgrave soldier for reference. I wanted to make it dwarf so I had to make it a bit smaller though. First I started by cutting two equal length pieces of a thin metal wire for the spine and legs of the model. I used pliers to twist it around to make the torso area and after that I cut the leftover hands off. I left some excess wire to the legs to make some room for the crafting. I also used pliers to adjust the legs in a stance I wanted the miniature to be. For short-legged dwarves the legs are quite minor piece in this project as you will see uh, as the video goes on. Then I pushed the armature into the wine bottle cork to make it easier to sculpt. I took some female polymer clay, but you can really use any polymer mass or possibly even air drying clay, even though that doesn't allow enough detail in my opinion, but for bigger monsters or bigger miniatures, air drying clay works fine, pretty much. First I just molded the rough shape of the person's torso and leg area. After that I took thin strips of the clay and started placing it around the torso and leg area to create the clothing. Don't be too detailed in making the base sculpt since the clothing part is where you start adding the detail so it doesn't matter if the chest or or waist area is not that exact uh, unless you want to make a miniature that has like a skin tight clothing. I tend to use a small knife or even a needle to create some sharp textures and small details. For example for chainmail armor a needle is a very good tool. One easy way to create good looking detail is just do belts and ropes and other small stuff like that and just roll the clay into a long strip and place it wherever it will look good. For example around the sleeves, the boots, waist, etc. Then once it's placed on you can use the knife to start detailing it more. For example the buckle. At this point I noticed that the miniature legs were way too short when compared to the human model and I didn't really want to make a gnome since the hands are a bit too big for that so it should be at least up to the chest of the human miniature with the head so I sculpted the legs again and added some detail to them. A cloak is a nice way to add some flavor to the minis and cloaks and robes usually are a good way to hide mistakes and uh, and the stance of the mini a bit if you screwed something up in the previous step. Of course I do not use cloaks to hide mistakes. Next up is the beard and the armor pauldrons. I decided to do these separately. I used a thin layer of the femo and used the knife to t detail the beard. Before baking the mini I realized that the backside of the mini might look too bland with the huge pauldrons and stuff. So I made a fur collar around the back area of the mini and used a knife to create the texture for it. And into the oven it goes. It takes about 30 minutes in 110 degrees Celsius which is about 230 Fahrenheit to make it ready. 
once it was ready, I used super glue to start gluing the pieces on the model. I used the two hand axe set from the Frostgrave soldiers sprue and pick the head that look at least somewhat like a dwarf at this point, but we will be going to hide it with the beard mostly. Now it was ready for painting. I decided on a color scheme of green and black. For the boots and gloves I experimented with different shades of brown. Always paint the small areas first, not like I did, so do the face first for example. As you might have seen, I used a product called Fimo Effects to sculpt the mini. There are different kinds of polymer clay with different range of thickness and possibility for detail. Uh, the Fimo Effect, actually what I'm using, is something that glows in the dark, but since I'm painting over it, it doesn't really make a difference. I have made a couple of flaming skulls for which one of them I used Fimo Effect, but on a game table in the dark it might give a bit of a glow, but it really needs quite much light before that to actually make any difference, and the glow only stays for about 5 minutes, so the Fimo effect doesn't really work how it's supposed to, I think. So I would advise just to use the Fimo Basic or Fimo Professional and just paint over it so that the color of the clay doesn't really matter. Once all the paint was just about dried up, I started adding highlighted areas to the armor parts, the pauldron and the helmet. First a couple of spots of white and then dry brush them with white also. Then I made the white outline around the edges of the pauldrons and the helmet to make them stand out a bit more. For the beard I started by adding diluted dark brown so that the cracks and shadowy areas will pop out more. I had to repaint some green and brown areas next again because of the shaky hands and the black color spilling around too much. Once the dark brown colored fur was dried, I started dry brushing it and the beard to give it highlights. Then I added yellow and green once more to the model to make the colors more vibrant. When painting with cheap acrylics like I am, you will have to use several layers of paint to really make them look colorful and vibrant and saturated. The acrylics I'm using will become very non-vibrant and dark once dried, so I have to put several layers. Of course you can just use the basic miniature paints that you use for Warhammer and whatnot. They usually have much more of the pigment to them. I used a 25mm base I made from air drying clay and painted it with dark green. Then I glued fine sand on it to create a crown texture on it, which I painted green next. At this point I cut off the excess metal wire under the mini's legs and glue it onto the base. Brushing only lightly around so that the dark color of the base still showed through it at some points. This mini didn't end up as good as my other minis made like this, but when this is on the table mixed with other models like it, the small mistakes in the sculpt don't really show out. I have a unit of human soldiers on the table usually that have about 2-4 self-made polymer minis mixed in with them, so at a glance you will not even notice a difference. I also like to add yellow to the base, since grassy areas tend to have lots of yellow and brownish colors. And to finish the model I added grass tufts made from hemp rope and left it to dry. Once dried I painted some of the strands of the tufts yellowish green. By here you can see some of my older miniatures that I made like this, so I have 6 dwarves in total now and 5 elves which I made like this and I still have about 5 heads from the Frostgrave set, so I will be using them in the future, possibly. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.